hi guys welcome to another video uh, this is something that i landed on that i wanted to share with you guys it's about south africa recently they were electing as in asking questions appointing and searching for the right people to be put as judges or chiefs in the judiciary because it's a very important sector when it comes to how people are seen in terms of law. And I loved how Julius Malema was asking these people, and he's this person who doesn't care whether you're white, yellow, blue, black. He just doesn't give a F about it. He's going to ask you questions, and you are supposed to answer him in the right way. So he was asking this white man on how he feels about the judicial system as well as how him being elected is going to help in transformation in the law of south africa and guys this is what he had to say i just i watched this clip and i was like wow we need more people we need a lot of more people like julius malema let me know guys what you think about this how many staff members do you have in your office not in the group your office in my staff in my office mm. only one receptionist and uh, I use a, a typist that's not permanently in my service. We, as a group, use the, the typist. So how many, do you, how many are you in the office? You are three. It's you, the PA, and the typist. Uh, yes, the receptionist and, and the typist. In your office? Yes. And then how many are black people? Uh, the receptionist is a, is a black woman. Um, have you ever visited a township? Yes. Where? When I was in Bopetotswana, uh, on many occasions we had to go into the townships. Where? In, well, which in which township? In uh, Kharankwa, uh, Winterfeld. Can you speak any indigenous? Can you speak any indigenous language? No, no. Come Why? I cannot. I cannot give you a reason for that. I can't hear uh, Chief Justice. I cannot Justice. give you a reason why I cannot speak. Uh, yeah, have you ever seen any need to learn indigenous languages? Yes, I, I think it's a need to... to it's, it will be a, um, a good thing to, 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 to speak a, a, an African language. But you still didn't see any need to learn it when you think it's a good thing to... No, know. I did not. You didn't see any need to learn African language? No, sir. Do judges have a role to play when it comes to transformation? Yes. What role will you play to transform society as a judge? Well, sir, maybe to give you an example, uh, I've attached uh, a letter or email to my application form where a black woman appeared in my court in an opposed matter and she appeared in person and I've guided her right through the proceedings um, and at the end of the day I ruled in her favour. Do you support transformation? Definitely, yes. How does your appointment help us to transform the judiciary? So, as I've, I've already said, um, uh, the I'm in favour of, of, of transformation, as you, but uh, I cannot say how my appointment will. No, no, no you, transformation. You support transformation, therefore yes. you can't be subjective. In supporting transformation, you ought to tell us now, how does appointing you help to transform the judiciary since you are a, a supporter of transformation? No, sir, I don't know. It doesn't help us, right? No. Appoint, appointing you doesn't help us to transform the judiciary, am I right? Yes. Thank you. People who took our land is white people. When we say we want 
uh, our land. We don't want it from the sky. We want it from white people. So that's why we say we want our land from them. They've taken our land and they've taken our land through a black genocide. As you've seen the video, that is what went down. And I must say, I'm so happy coming across videos where a black man is not afraid to ask questions, especially to the pumped people, because some of them get positions because they, lo they look the way they are and not because they have qualifications. That's the reality. And it's what we live by every single day. So him asking this man how he's going to transform in any way, and he has no answer, shows and speaks volumes. And he, this, this man was t talking about how he should be appointed because he once helped a black woman, you know, win a case. And it's like he was using a black, a black woman, you know, rhetoric or like saying to kind of bring empathy to him. Like, you know, I care for the black people. I also helped this, this black woman, you know, win a case because I listened to her. So if I'm appointed, I'm able to do that. But then this is the same person that grew up in South Africa but doesn't know any language, any traditional language of South Africans, but claims to be South African and wants to do things that are better for the South African people. That's wild, wild. And in all honesty, I don't know why we are still, you know, keeping up with our colonial languages. Of course, we need to communicate. Like, like the way I'm doing right now, you might ask me, like, why are you doing that? Of course, I need to use it. But, like, why is it not the same energy when it comes to these people to, to learn African languages? We are just supposed to take in whatever they bring, but, but for them to even put in a little effort, a little, little effort to understand other people's languages it's it's too much for them they cannot stand it it's too heavy their tongue is too hard it cannot be lifted and it's just wild but also i love that malima doesn't just squeeze pumped people he also has the guts and the strength to ask his fellow black people on how they are going to help in any way if they are appointed because he asked this man who doesn't even know that as a judge you're not supposed to be a member of any party but he, he didn't see any problem with it he didn't see any issues with it this is what he had to say you come across as being complacent maybe because of your uh, high decorations or whatever the reason might be that you try you did not try anything in preparation of this to a point you don't remember your judgments you don't know how judgments get reported you don't remember even when given opportunity now, you still struggle to tell us which judgments were you leading. And then you say you don't see anything wrong. Now the Chief Justice tells me, an aspirant judge who prepares for this hearing, where such matters have been conversed, including on political party affiliation. You say, well, I don't know anything of that sort. And you are not just an ordinary person. Senior counsel, uh, who's an acting judge, says, well, I didn't know, but now I know the CJ told me. I'm going to argue that um, you are not suitable to be a judge. And worse with that uh, comments which were made on your judgment writing. Will I be fair? that I must live here with my rightful conscience that we have appointed a person who said, I don't know that there is anything wrong with being a member of the ANC, even when you are a judge. But since the Chief Justice said so, I'll relinquish it. Uh, with immediate effect it is not in your consciousness it is not in your conscience that a judge cannot belong to a political party if we did not have a chief justice with a polit with a wisdom judicial wisdom and just leaves you like that you are going to continue to be a member of a political party because your conscience doesn't allow doesn't tell you that there is anything wrong with it only the chief justice told you that just Honorable Malema, you will be unfair to live with that impression. I'm not complacent. I come here to apply for consideration, but everyone is entitled to make his observation about me. Being a senior counsel, I suppose does not necessarily mean I should know all. This is my first encounter to come in this in, in any interview of some, in any interview in my life. So my missteps or, or, or shortcomings should be 
I should be penalized for them, but one should also take cognizance of the fact that this is my first encounter in life that I come into the interview. Chief Justice, all I'm saying, I'm not saying you must know everything. I'm saying you don't remember where you were a lead counsel. You don't have, that is it's not supposed to be in law books or in, in, in any way. It's you, because you pride yourself as lawyers and judges with your judgments and cases that you lead and win or lose. You know, this is my case. You don't know how a judgment get reported. You don't have anything to show that you attended any course on judgment writing. And that's what's going to be 80% of your work. You have to write judgments. You don't know that. You don't know that you don't have to belong to a political party, which means I must live here. I having recommended the appointment of a member of a political I'm not saying whether you ruled against a ANC or not. I'm talking about the membership. That we, if we live here today appointed, we have appointed an ANC member to become a judge and where judiciary it is accused of being captured. Aspirant judges who come here, they will tell you, I've been a member of the ANC and I resigned since a year ago or, no, or two years because they knew now I must start cleansing myself of these things. And be, that's being aspirant. So being aspirant judge means you'll also research what are the common questions there and all of that. All of that, you did not take an effort. You don't know how many judgments you have written. And when I ask you, say, I won't know everything. I'm not asking everything. I'm asking about a rough estimate, not even me, the Chief Justice does that. That answer doesn't come out convincingly. I'm saying, and this is what I'm going to say, even with your response, I'm not convinced. And I, I take it, what you're saying, is your first experience, first time, and all of that. I'm not convinced you are ready to take the bench. I think, in all fairness, it will be even fair to yourself to give yourself sufficient time. They can give you acting instinct, and then you give yourself time to also attend aspirant judges' uh, courses to improve on this knowledge and to prepare even much better in the next meeting. Because, I mean, for the next interview or whatever happens in the future, a person who's known by CJ. They've gone to school together. The CJ makes such a, a disclosure before us. And then in the response, we hear such a complacent person. Even when the CJ said, no, well, I'm going to act fairly. I don't have a problem, but we know each other. Perhaps that might have been something that misled you, that you know her and therefore things are going to happen. They are not going to happen here. Here you come prepared. Thank you very much. This is exactly what I mean, that we should take accountability as African people and also look to our leaders or the people that take positions that have to benefit us as a people because tell me why this man that malema was questioning who wants to be a judge doesn't know anything about the law and he says this is this is his first time to have an interview like he has never been or he has really never been in a place where he has to be interviewed how on earth did he get the positions he has if he has never been interviewed, so literally he was just appointed by people because they know him, because he's a friend to someone. That's something that is really, really torturing us African people. Like, we have people that don't have qualifications, but because they are connected, they are put in positions. I'm not saying it's bad to be connected. We all move in life to be connected, to achieve certain things in life. But when it comes to how African people are run and governed, is crazy ridiculous i've seen yeah, yeah i've seen how people react to let's say examples of nipple babies and people are like oh she she got this or he got this because of the mom the dad guys it's the same thing when it comes to african countries people are put in positions because they have they have connections they, they have money they have friends and they don't even care about the people that are go are going to be like in positions where these people are, are asking to be put if that makes sense how can you be a judge and you don't even remember the times you ruled in favor of people you don't know the writings of being a judge you don't know anything about being a judge and you claim to want to be a chief judge is, it, does that even sound okay when you guys listen to it? It's just ridiculous. And this is why people hate or other people from the Western world hate people like Malema because 
they are they 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 are used to just taking just taking just like you, you saw the white man that says oh he wants to be a judge but he doesn't even want to learn the indigenous language of any of the people of South Africa no it's too much it's too much and i mean always using the excuse of helping women black women that's ridiculous it's insane it's insane and i just i'm like how how are we going to ever have things done if we have these complacent people like malema was calling this man because it is true it is true make it make sense make it make sense uh really in 2024 should we be having these kinds of people be put in positions of power in power like the way we see african leaders and this is why i say african leaders are not even african leaders because everything they do is in the favor of other people and not for the african people so it's like the same thing they force themselves to want to be in power they get power they don't do things they, they don't do things for african people and then they come out and want to tell us on how they are puppets how they can't do anything but when it comes to stealing and selling our resources of they are very very easy to sign off those things like it's crazy ridiculous and that's why Malema is not always going to be liked by these groups of people that are scammers thieves and everything of of fakery if that's the right way to put it guys thanks for watching let me know what you think about this I'll I'll see you in the next video yeah thanks for watching